we are in live yes a very good morning to zambia and malawi uh, the good afternoon to india uh, now we are in the session of uh, ninth day uh, in the scholar and skill enrichment program today we are going to see the entrepreneurship opportunities uh, now i uh, invite uh, mr anthony to introduce the, our today's resource program Thank you, Mr. Rajkumar, sir. Again, a wonderful uh, week beginning. Thanks to the God Almighty for uh, giving us this greatest opportunity. Along with that, thanking to the uh, th thanking uh, to both the universities, Saint John the Baptist University, Malawi, Saint Eugene University, Zambia. And uh, as we discussed, uh, this week uh, is going to be a crucial week uh, in our uh, webinar workshop series, actually. As we discussed uh, uh, plenty of things during our uh, earlier uh, workshops, from today onwards, we are going to discuss something about the entrepreneurship. The world, uh, the entire globe is uh, uh, murmuring now. So from this week, onwards from today onwards the entire week the whole week uh, will be uh, related with the uh, entrepreneurship today we are having an eminent entrepreneur a successful entrepreneur having global vision such a wonderful uh, personality i'm very happy to introduce uh, uh, mr abdul latif sir now i am uh, please hold on Yes, hope everyone of you seeing. So I'm very happy today to introduce our uh, Abdul Latif sir. His academic qualification is IETE AMIE. He is a computer science engineer and he is a upcoming successful entrepreneur of india he is owning a company and he is the chief executive officer for exam summary and his professional qualification certified international trainer for expand your business such a valuable certification uh, he did with the uh, uh, help of his richest experience today we are going to learn more about the entrepreneurship opportunities across the globe actually we are he is not going to discuss anything about india or africa or uh, europe he is going to discuss about globally actually and he is a regional mentor at mhrd ministry of human resource development cell and he is a digital strategy advice at akbar group of uh, companies it is one of the a uh, very big group in india they are dealing with the uh, travels and other uh, related activities and he is a facebook lead trainer uh, also exam summary that is his uh, startup is a nascom 10k startups incubated company so such a, a great positioning he has made of his company they are building a complete interactive platform for learners they are doing this exam summary is related with the uh, uh, learning process with our platform we can save 50% of the time learning through online cut down on traditional learning methods they engage in e learning and some of their core features are adaptive learning blended learning flipped classroom personalized learning professional development and much more in in their uh, 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 race actually and they are creating a psychometric uh, testing tool also connected with hr productivity suit for prescriptive and predictive analytics to be delivered as a saas model and they are the lead implement on facebook smp uh, smb boost your business project he is a lead uh, implementer for india see such a young and energetic uh, uh, successful entrepreneur today we are having so on behalf of uh, st john the baptist university on behalf of st eugene university i am welcoming this uh, uh, wonderful gentleman to take care of our today's and tomorrow session he is handling uh, uh, he'll be handling today as well as tomorrow's session tomorrow he is going to handle with the uh, digital platform and uh, digital uh, establishments 
today is going to speak about the entrepreneurship opportunities i don't want to take much of your time today my dear uh, participants please make use of this uh, such a wonderful uh, session as i was discussed with him about uh, uh, the african soil he was very impressed about uh, he was uh, you know uh, very uh, uh, interested in uh, sharing uh, the features uh, of the african soil the potential you people are having to become a successful entrepreneur with this uh, new morning i am handing over the session to our respected and beloved abdul latif sir welcome sir and now the session is yours sir you can uh, unmute your uh... thank you sir the session is yours okay um, first of all uh, thank you god good morning uh, to the students of uh, saint baptist and the eugene university in uh, two wonderful countries of uh, a continent which has uh, immense opportunity and the names continent's name is called africa um uh, this is my first time uh, talking to uh, such an young audience in africa africa has been uh, part of my heart um, i studied um, in a country called the united arab emirates uh, we had uh, many african friends uh, but uh, none of the friends were from uh, to this countries uh, were from sudan and uh, somalia uh, we know the courtesy of uh, you people um, how indians have uh, been success in your uh, soil due to the entrepreneurial spirit what you have and the resources which uh, can be beneficial for uh, both of the countries uh, india has been um, in a large foray in uh, these countries Uh, due to the strategic importance of uh, you people and um, africa has a large potential it has a large potential in terms of all the entrepreneurial uh, aspirants across the globe so i will be speaking some uh, some uh, positions or uh, some notes uh, about um, what you can say about a glimpse a glimpse of uh, how ca- what are the opportunities in front of you how successful people from your area has been uh, working in the streams and uh, we will go through the some of the intricacies and uh, some of the problems you face and how can you overcome that uh, position so i will be sharing my screen now Is it okay now, Raj Kumar? My screen is okay. Go for PPT. Screen sharing is okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So I can take the slides, right? Yes. Okay. Now you can see my slide, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Abdul Abdul Latif. I'm an implementer. I'm uh, working for a uh, for, for a company called Facebook. You people will be very familiar with Facebook. I'm a project lead for uh, a project project called Grow Your Business. Um, from 2017, we have implemented a pilot project called Boost Your Business. From 2017 to 2018, uh, for a aspirant group of 20000 entrepreneurs and luckily i was one of the best uh, person who have done this project in india in 2018 uh, feb uh, we have been selected uh, to facebook uh, headquarters in uh, regional office in uh, delhi and we have been given training and we have been certified as lead trainer for this program from 2018 onwards i am associated with an uh, with uh, ministry of msme micro small and medium enterprise there are ancillary uh, apex bodies called edi 
India is an Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India. And I'm a consultant to United Nations uh, Project 2030 um, and uh, a mentor to uh, Atal Innovation Mission, which is under uh, our uh, body for uh, which is called Niti Aayog of the Government of India. So we will be uh, jumping into the for, to, uh, training right now. Uh, I will be just uh, going through some of the glimpses of uh, entrepreneurship. I know that uh, some of the people who have, who eminent people who have taken class uh, last week, I have uh, seen some of the videos. Uh, in some of the videos, I have seen that they have spoken about entrepreneurship, but I will be going through uh, some of the positions of entrepreneurship. So, as uh, it is an interactive session, it is not an interactive session. Unfortunately, I cannot ask questions to people who are sitting there, but I will be expecting some questions at the end so that we can uh, make it, uh, we can uh, uh, break the ice at the end of the session. So I'll be going through what is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is the ability and readiness to develop and organize a running and run a business enterprise. So I'll explain what it is like um, an entrepreneur is a person who sees an opportunity in every problem which a customer face. That is my, my explanation for entrepreneurship. This is an explanation which can be written in a book. So entrepreneurship is the ability and readiness to develop and organize. Okay, fine. But what I see is that entrepreneurship or rather an entrepreneur is a person who sees a solution for a problem which is there in the market or in the society. So for example, a problem, uh, suppose you have a problem of electricity. I have seen one example from Africa in one of the TV uh, uh, documentaries that uh, one country in Africa has electricity problem and um, main sport event of African people according to my research and experience is football. So what they have done is that uh, they have connected some charging devices inside the football in the soccer ball and uh, they have they are playing for around you can say one and a half to two hours three hours so that the, due to this kinetic energy which is generated when they when they have a projectile motion of this soccer ball uh, fortunately potential energy will be stored as battery charge inside uh, the, the the connected devices in the soccer and people can connect what you can say people can connect uh, they are mobile phones for charging up to 8 hours or 10 hours. So, this is what is called entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is the ability for a person or a community of people to find out a solution for problems which is a problem for many people. See, for uh, someone, uh, uh, why I came to uh, my, I will tell you my example. Like, uh, I was working in uh, Dubai uh, till 2013 and uh, when I came down to India uh, due to the recession problem, when I came down to India, I found out that uh, education is a traditional method, education's pedagogy is traditional so that uh, people are not accustomed to the, the, the official or you can say the latest technologies latest technologies uh, latest technologies uh, uh, which uh, which uh, is being used inside uh, which has been which has been uh, what you can say which has been uh, trained or used across the globe so what it is it is that i have researched i have researched uh, researched uh, many people or many companies who have been using this technology erstwhile across the globe and uh, I found out that the, some of the technologies or some of the some of the uh, what you can say some of the training methods which you which is used across the globe can be emulated in India. So I came with this idea that uh, as Mr. Anthony, uh, my dear friend, have said that they are going to implement some sort of pedagogical uh, training method. So what I found out is that I have. Uh, 
I have copied some of the methods across the globe and I have copied that method and I have brought it to my product. But I can say, I can say that unfortunately, I unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, my business has been that the, the technology or uh, what you can say, the model which I have copied has been failed. So what I did is that I have uh, made uh, that uh, solution which has been brought uh, for the education sector to the HR sector. This is the, the, the maneuverability an entrepreneur should have because entrepreneur, entrepreneur should uh, find out, should find out what, uh, what are the needs of the society, what are the needs of the customers whom he is addressing with. Because one solution which is found in America cannot be copied in that same format as a solution for Indian people. You get me? So a solution which is found, which has been tested, which has been tried and which has been used by a, 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 a basic of people I mean, in America cannot be copied as the same solution, same uh, business model in uh, another country. So what, that is the problem why I have faced. So I will be giving you some examples of what is my journey. So um, I can say to you, this is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is nothing but you, you should have an eagle's eye to find out what are the problems which is faced by the society. So in every problem, you can find out a solution which can be copied by many people, which can be copied by many people. Um, so this is the this is the thing what uh, so I, what I'm telling you is that in Af in uh, in a continent like Africa, where we will be discussing many positive sides because you are one of the unexplored or you can rather we can say that you are the only unexplored continent in the world right now. Europe it is already saturated. We don't have any any business models or any any innovation which we can br bring in Europe. In America, it is also it is already being saturated. China, we cannot uh, in a country, a company from from outside of uh, China cannot enter China, and uh, we cannot bring any type of innovation there because those people are having a close knit community where they can emulate themselves. India and Africa are the two areas where we people can cooperate in a big, big way, and uh, we can bring many sorts of uh, what you can say entrepreneurship agreements or uh, you can say joint ventures by which it is possible uh, for uh, for both of the uh, both of the uh, you can say people of both continents uh, to be to flourish and to thrive and uh, we people have a, a demographical and a societal psychographical psychological uh, what you can say a trait uh, to you because uh, from the ages what we can learn from the paleontologists and uh, people that Africa and India were a, both uh, in a single entity around 500,000 years ago and due to some tectonic plates we have been uh, what you can say we have been uh, differentiated into two continents uh, two, one is a country and another one is a continent why I have uh, kept a, a young lady's uh, photo here uh, a gentleman's photo can be kept there uh, for entrepreneurship position because I kept only due to this reason is that entrepreneurial spirit is largely happening in Africa or in uh, woman population because uh, I have uh, seen an African proverb before that if you teach a boy you can get a workman but you teach a girl you are a full village is being enlightened this is the proverb uh, we can see an african proverb which is very famous why it is famous it was one of the proverbs which was fought by christian lagarde sure, during her speech at uh, international monetary fund, uh, funds uh, uh, one of the conclave in washington in 2014. so according to our research in many areas women are the major population of people who have uh, the tendency to do entrepreneurship. So we will be uh, we will be uh, jumping into 
Uh, what are the four types of entrepreneurship which we can say? Well, four type. Uh, generally, we speak that there are four types of entrepreneurship. One is called small business entrepreneurship. Next one is called scalable business entrepreneurship. Next one is called a large company entrepreneurship. And next one is called a social entrepreneurship. We will be discussing about the uh, four of this. See, small business entrepreneurship is that a person, okay, is a one man army. So <clears throat> he starts, uh, for example, a hairdressing company, a grocery store, a travel agent, a consultant, a carpenter, a plumber, an electrician. So what he do, he do is that he run his own firm and he employs some people either as a um, what you can say permanent employee or a consulting employee so this is this is one of the an example of an young lady who is standing uh, in in a in a market shop and selling her uh, selling her produce which is called uh, which is in this photo is called a tomato okay it's not called it's tomato okay that tomato has been in is been sold in small quantities quantities so the only employee and the owner of this entity is who is a single person either it is a woman or a man okay so that's called a small business entrepreneurship so what are the what are the positive sides of this business and what are the negative sides of this business we will be we will be discussing it now so what are the positive sides of this business is that he is a single entity he don't have to share anything with any other people it's his headache to grow the company if it is having a pain point let him close the company but what is the negative of this uh, stuff is that he cannot grow after a certain point he cannot grow after a certain uh, certain point he cannot grow so he cannot um, get external funding he cannot uh, have uh, many professionals which can be brought into the company as consultants these are one of some of the problems so he can he will be funding his company either by his own accruals or he will be taking a business loan this is called small business entrepreneurship according to our research we will be discussing in the slides that um, these are around uh, in india you can say
Hello. Uh, you can proceed. You can proceed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Raj, sorry. When was the time I became disconnected? Hello. Okay. So we were discussing about uh, small business entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, right now we will be discussing about uh, scalable startup entrepreneurship. Scalable startup entrepreneurship is that this entrepreneur starts a business knowing that their vision can change the world. Okay. So when their vision can change the world, people as investors will think in their business and will encourage these people to think out of the box. Fortunately, I'm one of uh, those model, uh, what I was speaking before, that uh, I am one of the model, uh, I am one of this, uh, this category. Okay. So, I'll tell you my example, how I, uh, how I, uh, I'll give you an example of the scalable startup entrepreneurship uh, thing. I, started my uh, startup journey like i came from 2000 uh, from uh, dubai in 2013 and i started a small small training program or a training business in india so many people came to my place i have seen many people uh, Hello? Hello? Rajkumar? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I continue? Yes, continue. Hello? Yes, sir. Please continue. Can I continue? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, dear participants, uh, so sorry for inconvenience because of the resource person areas have uh, heavy uh, wind, so they are facing some of uh, network issues. Yeah, 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 we have so, some network issue here, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that is the problem. We have some network issue here. So, can I continue? Please, please. Yeah, please, sir, please. Sir.
Rajkumar, can you hear me now? Rajkumar? Okay. Yeah. So I'll be discussing about scalable startup entrepreneurship now. Scalable startup entrepreneur starts a business knowing that their vision can change the world. So I'll giving me I'll be giving you examples of uh, how can a scalable or a startup entrepreneur can be, and we will be discussing about some of the successful startup entrepreneurs in Africa, and we will be discussing about some of the successful entrepreneurs in specifically in Zambia and Malawi. So, a entrepreneur should find out what is the problem which is being faced across his area. I'll give you some of the examples of uh, how the big technology big companies came. See, we will be taking an example of Google. How Google became a successful company. Prior to Google, there were there were two companies who were doing uh, who were in the uh, what you can say, with the, who were in the search uh, business. One was called uh, Alta Vista, and next one was called Yahoo. Okay, one was called uh, Alta Vista, and next company was Yahoo. So Sergey Brin and Larry Page have, uh, what you can say, have found out what are the problems which were being faced. By people when they were using these two search engines. And they took an algorithm which was an open source algorithm which is called PageRank from Stanford University where they were studying and uh, they found out that this algorithm ra ranks a page according to some of the metrics which they have found out. And uh, what they did is that they increased the metrics by which a page can be ranked and they found out a new algorithm which is called page rank. So what they did is that traditionally all the search engines were using database, proprietary database programs where you can rank each thing stuff to base on the algorithmic scale like you can say first page, second page, third page, fourth page. In page rank what they did is that they have uh, ranked each page on the basis of some of the ranking factors which are being mainly used by the people on a common life scenarios. Their company became famous. Their company is one of the richest company right now in the world in search space. These are the characteristics of a startup entrepreneur should be. He have to find out a business problem which is a problem faced by many people and many people's problem, his solution will be tried and tested by many people. In this scenario, what can happen is that funding is not an issue because if your business model is right and you have the right time, for example, you can say about Uber, you can say about Airbnb. What was the business model of Airbnb? Post 2008 financial crisis, 2008 financial crisis, the only thing which happened is that uh, financial crisis, every hotel was not being used on a large scale. So people started renting their homes. People started renting their homes. This became a business model. Airbnb, Airbnb was born. So we will be discussing about some other business models. Next one is called large company entrepreneurship. Uh, what are the, what are the company what are the, what do you mean by large company entrepreneurship? These companies has a defined life cycle. Most of these companies grow and sustain by offering new innovative products that revolve around their main products. For example, Procter & Gamble. You can say Unilever. They change their technology, their customer preference, new competition, and large companies bring innovative products 
not on a short scale that's that's a that's a reason why we can compete with large company any startup companies or any entrepreneur or any person who has a vision to change the world by researching about the problems which is faced by the people by researching the problems which is faced by the people and if we find out a solution which we can bring to the table any startup company can compete with a large enterprise or a large enterprise that's the reason why we are uh, get, trying to motivate you people trying to motivate you people uh, saying that saying that uh, it is it is a possibility that any person can bring a big company next one is called uh, social entrepreneurship social entrepreneurship uh, it's a so it's a, it's a it's a nascent stage it's a type of an entrepreneur who find out some social issues uh, in a particular area or a particular locality or a particular state or a particular country and try try to solve that problem uh, in africa there are uh, many many uh, companies or you can say many ngos uh, in the uh, you can say in uh, in your area and many countries that i have seen across who are doing this uh, types of entrepreneurship their only motto is to work for the society and more not make any profit we cannot say it is not uh, make any profit it is like uh, you can say uh, you can say that the money which they make is actually uh, we can say it is as a surplus cash which can be used in reverse to the society again so what are the characters characters of uh, you can say entrepreneurship what are the characters of uh, an entrepreneur you can according to our experience from uh, many areas we can say not all entrepreneurs are successful according to our research 90% or you can say 95 to 96% of the people who have taken entrepreneurship as a route have failed in the span of 18 months or you can say within a span of one and a half years so we will be discussing about some of the traits which an entrepreneur should have first one is to ability to take risk ability to take risk next one is innovation next one is visionary and leadership quality we will be um, explaining about these things one is called ability to take risk so how a risk is taken there are two types of risk one is called calculated risk and next one is called uncalculated risk large corporations on the per se will take what type of risk they will take large they will never take it uh, uncalculated risk so their uh, risk of failure will be very low but their innovation quotient will be very low but in our case any person who comes out of college i know that many people who listen to my uh, video right now will be completing their degree programs very soon and uh, many people who will be listening to the video will be trying to start a career by choosing or uh, becoming an entrepreneur by himself so a person uh, of our category will be having a vision to take a risk which is uncalculated but it should be balanced risk so he should be having a condition or a procedure to take like uh, to research himself in a such a way that he should find out the statement or the product which he is trying to bring will be having a solution to many people for example 
you can say garbage collection is a big problem across the globe we cannot say per se in africa it is a big problem in india it's a big problem in europe it's a uh, you, can, you cannot say uh, you can say it's a big problem in europe but it's an unorganized and organized problem in, in developing countries per se so if we can take a risk by i have seen an entrepreneur from africa who takes garbage from house and he tries to make rubber and plastic out of it so that he can um, he can bring some sort of uh, what you can say some sort of uh, yeah some sort of uh, products out of it some sort of products out of it so this is called and uh, what this is called uncalculated uh, this is called a risk but that risk will be uncalculated but that risk will be balanced these are these types of entrepreneurs has a large no sorry these types of uh, companies has a large appetite for investment from which types of company which type of people investors so he show uh, how i say a balanced risk because a factor is called innovation he generally he should generate new ideas and he should know how to sell that idea to many people and earn a profit from it okay so you have you have seen a company or you should uh, from after my video session you should uh, search for a company called byju b y j u s it's a company in india uh, a training company right now the valuation of that company is around us dollar 10 billion why because education is a big problem across the globe especially in developing countries the only investment what we do is for education so he found out a problem statement that when india's internet penetration is around 42% and 260 million people are going to colleges schools universities post graduate program for an only purpose called education he found out that there is some problems which he can address through his product and he can make some money out of it so people try to people try to invest there and that company is right now in a valuation of around us dollar 10 billion there are many products from africa also which we will be discussing i have seen some of the products due to in my research that this price of products have been successful there in education sector why i said a person should be visionary and he should have leadership quality he should be very visionary he should not think for one year he should not think for three years he should be having the capacity to think for at least 5 years down the line so that his company will be accepted by many people he will be only recognized after a number of years he will be only recognized by people after having many ups and downs an entrepreneur should be ready to take risk both on his personal front his economic front his social front and above all in a psychological front so the person who is called an entrepreneur should be visionary and he should have leadership quality i will speak about leadership quality why because leadership quality is a quality where a person is differentiated as a leader and as a manager a person is a leader when he accepts criticism he accepts negative thinking he accepts failures from his subordinates a leader will be a person who will tell the people to lead he will motivate people to think ahead of the curve he will uh, motivate people to think out of the box and when those people succeed he never take credit of uh, that stuff that thing whereas manager will tell you to do this procedure that procedure you go this way you go that way and he will be every time afraid of every anything so he will be never having 
the the, the, the what you can say these types of uh, characteristics one he should be very open minded any circumstance can be an opportunity and any opportunity can be an, a disaster it can be an opportunity or it can be a disaster for example i can tell you a company in india which is called paytm okay paytm for in 2018 our honorable no 2018 2017 our honorable prime minister took a decision to demonetize the what he gets a legal tender of 500000 rupees and he encouraged the people to use a technological advancement called digital payment so pay 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 tm recognized the gravity of demonetization or and he acknowledged the need of an online transaction today that company is worth 16 billion us dollars okay this is the open mindness you should focus i have i will give you an example in uh, malawi uh, i have uh, taken the companies what they their company do is that they know in this uh, lockdown period rural area people have the big tendency of a procedure called a panic buy so they found out that people are very much afraid of getting food in this corona season they started a company and only through whatsapp a whatsapp and twitter they will post their photos in twitter and they will do their sales through whatsapp their customer support their customer satisfaction their uh, survey their research everything is done through whatsapp so we should do in tomorrow's class we will be discussing about the digital transformation methods by which any person can start his own business sitting at home okay next thing is that as a father and a mother knows his child an entrepreneur he should know his product an entrepreneur's child is his product a company owner should know the product offerings the latest trend in the market how to fill the the void which has created or which is be the which is to be created or which is being created in the market before bringing your product so how can you do that that's a big question which is to be discussed how can you do that? you should research what are the i'll tell give you an example see uh procter gamble procter gamble want to want to try you can say shampoos in india and one of the famous uh, shampoo is called eden uh, shoulders so their marketing people came to india and uh, they brought uh, this 100 100 ml bottle and that bottle was uh, sold for 130 rupees across indian stores respective of it is rural or urban or you can say kirana kirana we say for many petty shops in india kirana so in this uh, method what they found out that this uh, sale is not happening sales volume is stagnant the marketing money which they have spent is not being utilized properly so they went to a college professor who is from uh, antony's uh, place called uh, dr bala subramani subramani who passed away
హలో ఎస్ ఎస్ సార్ ఓకే కెన్ ఐ కంటిన్యూ ఎస్ ఫ్రమ్ వేర్ విత్ స్లైడ్ ఐ యూ ఇట్ వాస్ డిస్కంటిన్యూ దిస్ స్లైడ్ ఆల్ యూ హ్యావ్ సీన్ ఎస్ దిస్ వన్ ప్రీవియస్ స్లైడ్ దిస్ వన్ this one yes you just start here here yeah. okay so discontinuation of business discontinuation of business malawi is the highest unfortunately is 30.2% people who started their business from the previous year has been stopping stop to their business and zambia it is 19.8 fears of failure Zambia and Malawi is the least fearful people to start a business in Africa. Nigeria has in a 16 percent there, Botswana has 19 percent there. So you only need is confidence, perceived opportunity, percentage of adults who see good opportunities to start a firm in the area where they live. So Malawi has a percentage of 79 percent. and zambia has a percentage of 77% percentage of adults who believe that they have the required skills and knowledge to start a business malawi has the highest it is 89% and zambia is 80% so universities like uh, stay in ug in and baptist university for students i am addressing right now should have the capability and should have the research paradigm to find out how they should research and uh, how they should uh, come out of the box there are many startup community communities in malawi one is called startup malawi which give you abundant research opportunities to find out what type of products can be sold in your area what type of products cannot be sold in your area there are many successful companies which will be will be discussing very shortly who has come out of the box and been established as a personal business okay what is the positive side of africa what is the positive side of africa one is africa the current population is around 1.2 billion people is goes projected to reach 1.7 billion by 2030 more than 80% of africa's population growth is over the next next few decades will occur in cities making it the fastest urbanizing region in the world incomes are rising across the continent so people have scalable income or you can say disposable income to try many products africa has many unmet needs in food beverages pharmaceuticals financial services healthcare education africa is industrializing why because a country called china has been investing many leaps and bounds to tap your resources thereby generating economy for the country our country is also investing a lot to bring potential for growth of our two countries people okay up uh, uh, and the one of the bottlenecks which we face is infrastructure gap so poor infrastructure gap is one of the big problem which is faced in africa 600 million people in africa lack access to the electricity grid that's the reason why while i was talking prior to my seminar or the discussion which we are having right now i talked that uh, people in many countries are using their leisure time to generate the electricity so that they can use their communication devices for their purposes so innovation innovation 
fully unleash agriculture and resource wealth because africa has large abundant space for agriculture and mineral resources africa has struggled to translate these resources to shared wealth and sustained economic development africa domestic gas market in africa is going to grow at 9% over a year to 2025 but the continent could use 70% of its own gas because that much unmet need is there in africa right now. and the next potential thing is that sub saharan africa so the world's fastest and new broadband connection between 2008 and 2015 is going to expect to increase seven fold between 2017 and 2022 africa has more than 120 million active mobile customers of which mobile money accounts that's the reason why i told you airtel a company in india has started digital payment service in africa prior to introducing that service in india india they have been brought that service till now but in africa the same company has brought that service before then africa has diverse countries and diverse cities 54 countries in africa are diverse in terms of population development levels growth rates stability nigeria has around 190 million people ethiopia and uh, egypt has 90 million each most african populations some countries in africa has below 20 million population nine countries in africa make up three quarters of african gdp in 2030 three countries will represent almost half of the household consumption of all the continent nigeria 20% egypt 17% and south africa 11% many small countries are growing quickly and increasing their share of continental gdp and consumption east africa and francophone central and west africa to increase their share of africa's overall consumption and significance this is uh, one of the mckinsey's african stability index point of countries your countries at the top ranking malawi and zambia so what are the different uh, different uh, things which we can distinct groups of countries emerge from this analysis there are three types of growers in african continent one is called stable growers next one is called vulnerable growers and next one is called slow growers so stable growers are these economies are relatively less dependent on resources and are progressing with their economic reforms and increasing their competitiveness vulnerable grower, growers are these countries are each at least one or three types of vulnerability such as angola or nigeria are heavily dependent on resource of exports other countries like democratic republic of congo face security governance challenges issues but fortunately <coughs> both of your countries malawi and zambia are not in vulnerable growers we should uh, i am supposedly by my research i have shown i have seen that you people are in slow growers category going to become stable growers very soon going to become stable growers very soon you have by 2030 africa will have 17 cities with more than 5 million inhabitants so how to win in africa how to win in africa you should find out what are the pain points which is affected by the population base as i told you there are three types of growing countries one is called stable grower next to one is vulnerable grower and next to one is low slow grower fortunately your country is not that much dependent on natural resources so innovation portion in your countries will be very high very high south are successful african innovators are also deeply conscious as a barrier to their business success an example i have taken for my research and for my class today is a company called dangote which manufactures commodities in massive volumes and has made aliko dangote 
Africa's richest person because he have brought a business model by diversifying into vertical many verticals diversifying into many vertical integrations of the supply chain of the supply chain on site power generation robust engagement with the government and in internal manufacturing academy so he brought a shock proof business model and a manufacturing model for his company so for entrepreneurs who are ready to solve problems and innovate to meet africa's unmet need there's tremendous opportunity of growth students of these two universities who
Dear participants, uh, so, sorry for inconvenience. Uh, the resource person side have the heavy rain and uh, uh, and full of weather, so they're facing the heavy damages in the network uh, areas. So we can continue this topic tomorrow at the same time. And uh, thank you so much for your patience. Um, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.